We're here at Bellefontaine Cemetery and we're going to be looking for some notorious women. St. Louis was a hotbed of the women's suffragette movement and, as a result of local efforts, Missouri had some of the most liberal laws for women of any state in the nation. Virginia Minor, a leader in the national suffragette movement, sued the St. Louis election commissions for refusing her the right to vote. The suit was brought to the Supreme Court of the United States and although she lost the legal battle, the publicity helped to speed the cause of suffrage for women. Her likeness is on permanent display in the Hall of Famous Missourians in the Missouri State Capitol. The Madam with a Heart of Gold as a St. Louis madam during the Civil War years, Eliza Haycraft had a very lucrative business. At a time when women had few opportunities to earn money, she was a successful businesswoman and was among the city's wealthiest citizens, male or female. Towards the end of her life, she wanted to be buried in Bellefontaine Cemetery, where most of her important clients rested. Despite her wealth, and a history of giving generously to Civil War widows and orphans, she was refused a burial plot. After some pressure was applied by the madam's representative, blackmail anyone? The trustees reluctantly sold her a large plot on the condition that no tombstone or marker of any kind be placed on the plot. During a trip to Italy in the early 1900s, Herman Lutis, owner of the first propriety drugstore in St. Louis, met a voluptuous model who worked for an Italian sculptor. He fell in love with her and proposed, but she declined. What exactly he proposed, we can only imagine. After all, there was already a Mrs. Lutis at the time. Heartbroken, Herman commissioned the sculpture to render a 12-foot marble statue of his beloved. The statue was shipped to St. Louis, where he kept it in the foyer of his Portland Place home. The several ton statue didn't sit well in the foyer and probably not with Mrs. Lutis either. In time, Herman moved the statue to the family burial plot in Bellefontaine Cemetery. When the weather began to deteriorate the marble, he enclosed her in a glass fronted case. Lutis died at age 50 and was buried at the foot of the girl in the shadow box. The Lavender Lady the Lemp Brewery was rocked in the years before the World War by the very public battles between William Lemp Jr. and Lillian Handlin Lemp, the Lavender Lady, during their scandalous divorce trial and subsequent custody disputes. Lillian's nickname was derived from her habit of frequently dressing in her favourite colour and going so far as to have her carriage horse's harness dyed lavender. Lillian charged that her husband drank to excess and kept company with other women. William countered that in addition to the excessive wearing of the colander lavender to attract attention, his wife had been seen drinking and smoking in public. A divorce was granted in a large part based on the testimony of a servant who claimed that she had found feminine hairs of various colours in William's bathroom while Mrs. Lemp was away. The former Mr. and Mrs. Lemp both rest eternally inside the Lemp Mausoleum. The St. Louis Beauty. Regarded at the time as the most beautiful woman in St. Louis, Kate Brewington Bennett died suddenly at the age of 37. Her very white complexion had been the envy of many, and an autopsy revealed that she'd been taking small doses of arsenic to retain her desired paleness. 
She did not realize that arsenic was a cumulative poison. Her husband, one of Bellefontaine's original trustees, erected an elaborate Gothic canopy of white marble, once considered the finest memorial in the cemetery. Well, I enjoyed visiting the graves of the notorious Ren of Bellefontaine. What about you, Claire? Supportive. It was a lot of fun and very interesting. I am not notorious. <laughs>